Joe, to see the application of fine tuning in cosmology, I'd like to see some examples. The only one I keep hearing about, which is very important, obviously, is the cosmological constant where you need fine tuning. Are there other areas of cosmology that lend itself to a, a fine tuning kind of analysis? Okay, so here's maybe the most basic example of all, um, the sun, okay? So why is the sun the mass that it is, and why are all the stars in the universe the mass of the sun within a factor of 10 or yeah. 20, okay, mm -hmm. or 30, whatever, two factors of 10. Everything yes. is within, uh, you know, they could be much more massive, they could be rocks, they could be moons, they yeah. could be almost anything. Yeah. And so... Th I mean, there's some black holes that are billions of, the, of solar masses. That's right. So one of the early realizations in fine-tuning studies was to say, well, the sun is a competition between the force of gravity uh -huh. and the outward pressure of the radiation. Uh -huh. And there's a natural balance between those two, which you can express in terms of two fundamental constants of nature. So one is the fine co structure constant, which controls all of chemistry, basically. And the other one is, is a, the gravitational analog of that, which is the ratio of gravity to, gravity to electromagnetic force with a pair of ele electrons or, or protons. Okay, so, so you get from simple calculations, um, you take a gas cloud, let's say, and you um, ask the question, um, let's imagine it gets colder, it breaks up into smaller bits, the smallest bit might eventually form a star. And what you find when you do this fragmentation calculation to try to form a star, is that you can express the minimum size of a fragment in terms of fundamental constants, but you get the wrong number. You don't get the mass of a sun, you get the mass of a planet. Huh. And it can't be a planet because at the beginning you didn't have the, the silicates and the iron that yeah. the planets are made of. So the calculation is simply wrong. And so you learn when you look at this more carefully with more physics and more understanding that in fact you make these minimal size lumps, dense clumps of gas, but then stuff accretes onto them, okay? It's different physics. It's not just physics of fragmentation, it's physics of growth. Uh -huh. And then, and it doesn't stop there either, because then you suddenly realize, well, if growth then determines the final size of my gas clump, why does it stop at the mass of the sun? It goes into hundred thousand, it could become a black hole. And then you realize that no, what happens next is that as this clump gets roughly the mass of the sun, it starts producing what we call feedback. It gets hot enough and any magnetic lines of force therein get tangled enough to give you forces that stop the gas accreting. Yeah. So it's a combination of, first of all, the fundamental fine tuning, which gives you the basic scale, plus complex physics, in this case, accretion and feedback. And that, so that means what we once thought was fine tuning is really nothing other than complexity, basically. We're here by self-regulation, you know, yeah, and that self-regulation, though, is that kind of a fine-tuning itself? Uh, because you can do, can you, can you do estimates that say if you vary the the you said the ratio between uh, gravity and electromagnetism, so electromagnetism ten to the fortieth or ten to the thirty-ninth times greater. So, is that a fine-tuned number? Well, you know, in some other universe where these constants might be very different. Yeah. You, Sure, you'd end up with different mass stars. But what we see around us is the result much more of complexity and self-regulation than any initial choice of the fundamental constants. That's yeah. what one has to realize. Yeah, it's not just the constants are there and it's just the way it is. Right. It's a balance in, in, some, in some very specific way. That's right. And uh, obviously you have to have sufficient mass so that when the gravity can cause fusion, you have to have enough pressure and temperature to yeah. cause fusion. Yeah. And, and that's balanced out by the the, 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 the pressure and the, uh, the balance of these forces. Completely, that's right. It, it's all force balance, but coupled with highly nonlinear physics mm. that means you don't even recognize uh. the, what went into it at the beginning. Yeah. And it all comes from self-regulation and, you know, I mean, I think the same is true in biology or consciousness. If you want yeah. ever to explain those, yeah. you'll find yourself tackling with similar arguments that are very, very different from fine-tuning. Interesting. Uh, are there other examples in cosmology? Well, um, there, for example, is the mass of a galaxy. Um, yeah. Why is the mass of a galaxy the way it is? And again, it turns out that um, you can calculate, you know, the mass of a big gas cloud, and it turns out it's a balance again between gravity, causing it to collapse, and 
the rate at which you can lose energy by atomic cooling, atoms bouncing into ions and electrons and things, exciting them and then radiating. And that gives you a natural scale. Clouds too big cannot lose energy, therefore they stay hot, therefore wow. they cannot ever make stars. Wow. But you find, fine, I can calculate the average mass of a galaxy, and that already, it already is a great success, right? We can learn why the Milky Way is the mass it is, but when you go to the surveys of galaxies, you find that most galaxies are very small, and there aren't that very many very big ones. And if you go to a theory of structure with only dark matter in, then it predicts too many small galaxies and too many big galaxies compared to what we see by enormous numbers. Mm. So again, something else is needed. And so this again is complexity and self-regulation. So for example, on the small end, it's exploding stars. On the big end, it's black holes. So how do the black holes work? Well, when a uh, massive galaxy forms, the center collapses into a massive black hole which accretes gas and then becomes incredibly energetic with the energy released from that gas, becomes what we call a quasar, which drives out much of the gas and therefore limits the galaxy from becoming very massive. So that limits the number of massive galaxies. And something similar happens for the small galaxies where exploding stars called supernovae do similar damage and they do damage only in the least massive galaxies where the gas can escape most easily. So at the end of the day, you've reduced the number of small galaxies and big galaxies to acceptable levels, what we see by the highly complex nonlinear process of self-regulation by incredibly difficult astrophysics to study, but we know is there.